Margaret Hunter, the wife of Congressman Duncan D. Hunter, pled guilty in federal court today to using campaign money for personal expenses, including family vacations, school tuition, dental work, even flying a pet rabbit to a family vacation. Margaret Hunter is expected to testify in the case against Congressman Hunter, who has said that his wife was in charge of the finances. So joining me now to talk about the case is political analyst, KUSI contributor, our good friend, Vic Bajaj. Great to see you, Vic. Yeah, great to see you as well. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks for helping us uh, sort through all of this. Always my pleasure. So it's my understanding that the trial is scheduled to start on the 10th of September, and her sentencing is on the 16th of September, meaning that she's got to testify before she learns her fate, and will the prosecutors take a look at what she says and make a determination as to how they recommend her sentence to the judge? Exactly. You hit the yeah. nail on the head. What will happen is one guarantee we have is that she will be sentenced after the resolution of Duncan Hunter's case. So either he'll go to trial and be acquitted, or he'll plead guilty, or I understand Greg Vega, his lawyers, filing some litigation regarding protections that could apply to him as a congressman, but not to Margaret as a civilian. So any of those results have to take place, then she will be sentenced. The process for all of our viewers to understand is a relatively secret process. So her cooperation, her testimony at corroborating certain pieces of evidence before the grand jury and, and to the eventual jury, if it goes that far, will be evaluated by the United States Attorney's Office, the prosecutor. At the conclusion of her contributions to the case, they will write a letter, a sealed letter to the court saying, you know, this is what Margaret Hunter did for us and this is what we think it's worth as far as a potential reduction in any kind of a sentence. The defense attorneys on behalf of Margaret will get that same document and they'll argue behind the scenes in a confidential litigation or paperwork going back and forth to educate the court hopefully and have the judge come to the right result as to what her cooperation is worth. Okay. But that calculus can't happen until Duncan Hunter's case has concluded. I understand she's looking at possibly five years, $250,000. What do you think she'll get? How do they weigh it all out? Well, you, you almost sound like a federal prosecutor. <laughs> that, that's when you should close the book and scare me and my client. But yeah. you know, the statutes have a very high ceiling, and they sound draconian and tough. But thankfully, since the United States sentencing guidelines have now been determined to be a suggestion or a recommendation rather than mandatory, our local judges are probably some of the best throughout the United States states at finding what the practical worth of a case is. I would be hard-pressed to believe that an individual without a criminal history, a mother who's done well for her family, and married to really the target of the investigation, can adequately describe herself as collateral damage. And I'd be hard-pressed to believe that she'll see custody in this type of a case. She's as close to Duncan D. Hunter as anybody could be, especially with all of these charges. Uh, 60 counts. That's Right. intimately involved with phone conversations and discussions. That's right. So what does it mean to him that she's now going to be testifying against him? I actually look at it as a good thing and this is based upon our experience dealing with our local prosecutors at the United States Attorney's Office. As I've said before, when the federal government knocks on your door and, and gives you that thing you never want to hear, step away from the computers, they already have 99% of what they're trying to find forensically during the search warrant. So so they have all the information for all intents and purposes, and it's a matter of corroborating documents to lay the proper foundation so they can be used as evidence against, in this case, the eventual target. So I don't think it's a surprise. I don't think the defense team on behalf of Duncan Hunter in any way is blown aback by the fact that this plea had occurred. I think it's a calculated, intelligent decision to educate in an educated way, evaluate the opportunity cost, take a lot of unnecessary dangers and unknowns off the table, and corroborate what the federal government already knows. I think globally it's a good result. Let's talk about some of the facts because there's allegations that they went they used the campaign finances for dinners and lunches and tequila shots. And I think maybe you hear about some of that and you think, well okay, they're going out to dinner, they're having a good time. That could be potentially campaign related. But then you hear about the six hundred dollars to get the pet rabbit to a vacation and you hear about uh, 
dental work, school tuition. How, how badly are those facts, if, if at all, going to hurt the case? Very much so. Yeah. The same way you seem to be offended and I'm offended by those expenditures of our citizens' money, we have to understand that ladies and gentlemen on our jury are members of our community. So they're similarly incensed by it. You have to understand negotiations are a metamorphosizing animal. Although there's a trial date looming, this is the time that the real negotiations happen between the defense team and the United States Attorney's Office. What do you think Duncan Hunter's going to get? Impossible to say, but <laughs> yeah. I will tell you, in the grand scheme of things, we're talking about a, a financial, really a theft. And the amount of dollars that were taken are going to be calculated pursuant to a table and the guidelines. And that will give us a number on what his exposure will be. I can tell you one thing. The judge who's handling the case will make the right decision. And, of course, he's claiming the charges are politically motivated and he's been targeted by these prosecutors who have attended uh, Hillary Clinton fundraisers and he didn't do anything wrong and he's, of course, innocent until proven guilty. Right. So. And, and if you probably, if you had hidden cameras on every legislator's uh, shoulder when they were out, I'm sure there were many shots of tequila on, on our community's yeah. dime. But, uh, yes, I would say the conservative uh, politicians are facing more indictments now than, let's say, the previous administration. Vic Bajaj, great to see you, Vic. Thank you, sir. Thanks for adding to that. Appreciate it.